Hey, hello. Alpha, there he is. Oh yeah. It's it's rare that I get to speak to someone in the same time zone. Yeah, I think we are in the same time zone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My brain's so used to like adding adding or subtracting two hours or so, <clears throat> or sometimes seven or six hours. So. Nice. So Mert, um, nice to have you. This this is um, a bit of a different call. This is the CNCF SIG, SIG network call. So we, we run it in a little bit of the same fashion as some of the other open source calls. But uh, but I'll send a link to the meeting minutes and we'll give a few others some time to join. Thanks. Uh, I guess it is uh, more collaborative and uh, more um i will see more other co companies or uh, foundations here yeah, that's probably um well uh maybe actually in a lot of respects not the meetings that the open source meetings that we hold in the layer five community are attended by more companies than usually show here uh, but yeah, it's it's good. It's a healthy collection. It's a great venue to um, engage with others from different companies, for sure. Because see... uh, when I look at the documents, I see it, uh, such as I forward uh, the other companies like um, Mastercard, HeshiCorp, Cisco. Totally. Yep. We just don't write the names down in the other meeting minutes, um, so you, it may not be as obvious to you that that's happening. But but yeah. I couldn't stay layer five and I say mine, but if it is uh, not acceptable, I handle it because uh, I'm not working yet for layer five. Uh, I'm just a community member. I, I, I just wrote mine. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's um, I, either which way you're comfortable. If, if you put layer five, great. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll embrace it. Um, if you put something else, um, that's fine as well. Um, yep. Maybe it's what. better. Contributor. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah, you, you made that true yesterday. You made that happen already. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Well, huh, let me give me a moment to poke a few people to make sure that that they come off from holiday. So I'll be right back. Maybe we're in another Zoom room because in the meeting notes, there are a new meeting link. Interesting. So in the, in the doc that says CNCF SIG network meeting notes? No, in the Kubernetes network SIG meeting. Let me oh, share okay. the docs. Oh, okay. yeah. You know what? Um, that's a common point of confusion. So actually that's a separate uh, meeting. That's for Kubernetes only. Whereas this one is for all of the CNCF. 
for so inclusive of Kubernetes, inclusive of Linkerd. Um, oh, I see. Like okay. that broad. And so um, let's let me uh, let me just check the calendar to make sure that we're not um, CNCF public calendar. This is the first Thursday of the month, right? Yep. Okay. All right. So forget it. All right. Well, we're we're, we're on. We've got a, a couple of us here. Um, uh, let's go. Let's let's uh, let's get started. I'm irrespective. Uh, let me let me share the screen. It's a good deal. We got. And then there it is. All right, fair enough, very good. So, so um, we're about six minutes past. Let's keep going. This is the CNCF SIG network meeting. Well, the first one of 2021. So um, very nice to have Mert. Thanks for coming. Mert Alfa, thank you for coming. We've got a topic um, very, very relevant to the two of you. We may have some others that join along the way. Um, the, uh, given that this is the first time for, I think the, the two of you to be on the call, it's probably good to give a brief uh, lay of the land, uh, so to speak, actually. One point of clarification that Rialfa was just highlighting is, <clears throat> is that it's um, commonly confused that this meeting is the same, that there's, a, there's one SIG network in the world and, and, um, and that's, that actually turns out not to be the case. So there's the Kubernetes SIG network and the CNCF SIG network. Um, one's is a subset of the next. Um, the Kubernetes SIG network tends to be a little more active and busy. A lot of folks participating and, and um, try to do more networking things in Kubernetes. Uh, we, it, uh, given that this typically isn't project specific, um, we're not always getting into the weeds here, um, but 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 I think today we're going to be able to a little bit. Um, so um, at a so so there's within the CNCF SIG network there is a working group called the Service Mesh Working Group. The Service Mesh Working Group has a few work streams, and so you can see the the charter and some some slides. We tend to give um, an update um, at, at each of the last KubeCons on things that we're doing. Um, th th this is the, the charter of the group. Um, this, there are two sort of, kind of two service mesh working groups or two service mesh groups within the CNCF um, currently. So one is this one, which tends to be, tends to be a little bit more of uh, vendors represented or projects and their maintainers tend to represent here and come here um, and try to help advance the state of tech. Uh, the other group is falls within the end users um, area of the CNCF. And so that, that service mesh, that tends to be the service mesh user group, um, which tends to advance um, the state of the art in terms of how you run these things and run them well. Um, so there are a number of initiatives within the Service Mesh Working Group. Um, we want where some of these, um, some of you might be familiar with already. We've we've talked about about a lot of these in the past. We've um, begun to reuse the SIG network meeting time to go advance these initiatives um, up until the point that we need to uh, provide more time for other SIG network topics. Um, so we'll cover those first because they'll, they'll take priority. Uh, and the, really, there's just one today, and it's just an announcement that um, Ambassador had been has been proposed for to be an incubation project, and um, has undergone due diligence uh, for quite some time. And that due diligence is initially done privately. Uh, having passed that private due diligence, it now opens up to a public request for comment. So whether you're a CNCF member or not, if you've got an opinion or you know, public comment, uh, you can review the docs and chime in. Right now, there's a discussion going on with respect to the name of the project ambassador. 
and it, it's, uh, it's to be renamed. And right now the, the proposal for that name is Ingress Controller for Envoy Proxy, or I guess more sort of specifically that it would be an acronym IC4E. So I'll, I'll let you guys read through if it's of interest. There's just um, some discussion there. Um, any, any comments on this before we go on to other topics? Cool. So I think at this point, like it, it, it's probably high probability that Ambassador um, lands in the CNCF as an incubation level project. Um, it's got an approval from this SIG. It's got an um, approval from um, sort of the representative TOC member. And so they're, they're talking about um, names, name for the project, so. Okay, uh, good. So any, any comments on Ambassador? All right, so we'll, we'll sort of switch streams into <clears throat> uh, service mesh working group topics. One of the ones that we've yet to introduce here and go through relatively thoroughly is one, um, an initiative called Get Nighthawk. And my hope is, is that this helps pull together a few of the different initiatives there. So let, let's, let's take a look, let's, let's walk through what um, Get Nighthawk is. Um, mm -hmm. So foremost, it's, a, a, it's an effort uh, being stewarded here within the Service Mesh Working Group. It is, uh, I think, you know, probably a tentative name, Get Nighthawk. I think, think that makes sense for all those that are involved. No one has voted otherwise or come up with anything uh, smarter. So uh, the project itself is, well, it focuses on Nighthawk. Um, and making Nighthawk accessible to the rest of us. What is Nighthawk, you say? Well, it's a load generator uh, written in C++. It's um, a, a sub-project, if you will, of Envoy. <clears throat> um, there are um, a few load generators. There are, well, there's a lot of load generators out there. There's um, a couple of others that are somewhat prominent in this ecosystem. Um, one is Fortio, and it's the load generator that was is written in Go. It was sort of born of the Istio project. <clears throat> um, and then there's a number of other load generators. Uh, there's been some recent focus and attention on Nighthawk, and um, it is being its feature set is being expanded, and we'll talk about that feature set. But that, that feature set makes it it fairly interesting, I think, to a number of parties. Um, including um, some folks at, including engineers at various tech companies that we're all familiar with. Um, also potentially including the, the Istio project that is both, I can think sort of is dipping a toe into you, the use of Nighthawk. So, so it's, it's a project that's doing well. Um, it is um, not easy to get to though, necessarily. Like there's a, there's a build of Nighthawk um, to, in order to build Nighthawk, you've got to have uh, you've got to have a copy of Envoy, and then use a lot of Envoy's tool chain. Use Envoy in your tool chain, so to speak, to compile and build uh, and make a release of, of a Nighthawk. I think the the there's a single release of Nighthawk today. It comes in a form of a container, if I recall. Honestly, like the the, the details aren't. It, it's not a point of a lot of documentation. It, it's a good, good project. I'm not, I'm not um, uh, putting it down, rather saying um, we think it's such a great project. We want to elevate it and assist it with some um, distribution, helping get uh, better distribution, uh, multi-architecture support, different OSs, different package managers to help get the project into other people's hands or users' hands, uh, in whomever. Hence, sort of the name Get Nighthawk. To really kind of focus on letting people get Nighthawk. Um, and well, there's some, there's some, yeah. go ahead. Um, 
when you say multiple architectures, do you mean also hardware architectures? Because I would assume that it's only x64 uh, in terms of. Yeah, I. Uh... Architecture, I would say support. No, ARM64 is getting some popularity lately. So maybe at some point that would be kind of interesting. I know that uh, it's building also against uh, various power PC, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, like the built infrastructure, at least for Envoy is there. I mean, maybe that's something that can be of interest. Of yeah, interest right. yeah. I'm having a little bit of a hard time hearing you, but um, but you're, you're mentioning things like, hey, potentially interesting things like power PC. Um, I, yeah, I had a hard time with the rest. Um, uh, am I breaking? It, it, nope, it was just really low. Oh, okay. <clears throat> That's because I'm using. So I was saying that Envoy already has the infrastructure to build for various architectures like Power PC. Um, I'm not sure if they have MIPS or whatever. I mean, uh, they already have ARM64, Power PC. Uh, and uh, if uh, this project is close to the built infrastructure of Envoy, I guess that something can be reused from their built infrastructure to also bring it to this other. I don't know how, how interested it, interesting it would be for someone to run it on other architectures, but at least ARM64 probably would be of interest to someone at some point. Definitely there's a rise in the interest to this architecture. So I guess that by the end of the year, it would be you know, something much yeah. more popular than what it is today. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. This is a, a, it's a good point, Nick. I am, I'm hopeful that uh, the investment that Envoy has had into those various architectures helps in this effort. That would be, you know, mm -hmm. to your point, yeah. that would be they, they also have, I'm sorry, they also have Windows builds. So, you know, if you want to get Wild there, <laughs> you can. <go. laughs> sure. yeah. so no, no one raised an eyebrow, but when you said Power PC, but when you said Windows, then all right, hold on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, good. I'm I'm ignorant on some, what some of what that is. I do know that the there's been a community that's been trying to get a build of Envoy for a few months. I'm sorry, a build of Nighthawk for a few months, and uh, like. Uh, and it, onto a different to support a different OS, and it's been rather. It's been really challenging. It's taken it's taken a few months to get there, and so, um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, so some of the goals of the project are yep. It's really you know about it's focused on uh, of get Nighthawk proper sort of on distribution of the project, making it easier to get to what we were just talking about. But part of the justification for why to spend the time to do that um, is because it interrelates with other initiatives in the Service Mesh Working Group, um, initiatives like um, Service Mesh Performance. Um, that specification, if you want to specify how it, like the, um, the size and shape of load that you would like to generate or a test that you would like to run or the way in which you want to characterize your performance, the, this specification is trying to help <clears throat> provide a, a common format for doing so. Uh, and so helping bring Nighthawk and that closer together is, is sort of part of the thinking here. Nighthawk itself is um, set to be support horizontal scaling or to say it differently, most of the load generators today, if you wanted to run multiple instances of the load generators, you would, um, need to wrap a bunch of scripting or a controller you know, around it. Um, Nighthawk is trying to up-level a bit of its intelligence to be cognizant of different instances of itself. Uh, so so that, that makes it more interesting. It also has a little bit of a plug-in model around um, the use or the, around this thing that's referred to as the adaptive load controller, which is to say that Nighthawk, um, has the ability to run run a load run a test, do some st statistical analysis of uh, the per, you know the characteristics of that 
test that the performance under that load. And then um, through this adaptive load controller, which you could plug in different algorithms or different um, decision points, that then Nighthawk would automatically kick off another test and sort of, and then um, interpret, you know, generate some results, interpret the results, and then kick off another test and sort of in an adaptive way control the load so that you could um, you maybe run some optimization algorithms or, or try to answer questions about like, hey, what's your what's the optimal load for this environment or for this app? So, so th these two things are forthcoming in Nighthawk and make it even more interesting. And part of the justification for wrapping some support around it. Um, so yeah, so anyway, these are the high-level goals. Some other reasons are that, hey, there's a service mesh patterns book that we've talked about a little bit before with about 30 patterns going in there about service meshes and their use. Um, some of that will be patterns on performance. And so Nighthawk will be referenced there to the extent that it is. We want to make it easy to for people to repeat these patterns and get these patterns in their hands. And so... So the rest of this doc kind of, kind of goes through things that are being, that we're looking to accomplish. Um, Meshery as a project that, a service mesh specific project that focuses on performance that um, supports running Nighthawk in a single instance today is um, part of the equation here about um, making it easy to get Nighthawk into people's hands, about making it easy to, um, run performance tests, evaluate them, run them again, um, and to, to take advantage of and expose some of those new capabilities that Nighthawk is coming forth with. Um, there's a related project to this that, that might explain why there are certain things that are sort of identified as being out of scope. Um, uh, there's a related project, it's called, it's, it's actually very, it's, it's not very relevant. It's just a great example of a project called Get Envoy. Uh, Envoy itself is available in certain formats, but um, there was a, a, a similar initiative created to help build a CLI, Get Envoy, to, and different packages to help get Envoy into people's hands. And so I mention it just as a sort of a correlate or um, a parallel analogy to get Nighthawk and the fact that the, the group isn't looking to create a get Nighthawk CLI, um, rather to capitalize on the management that's already provided by Meshery CTL, of uh, th this CLI. So, so we would be enhancing this CLI. So, um, so, so there's a couple of mockups about how, um, Nighthawk would be used within within Meshery and, and some of that that more enhanced functionality would come to bear, how that people would be empowered. There are, and then there's um, a, a collection of folks who are uh, coming to bear. So uh, on both the continuous integration work, um, Rudolf, Rudolfo, that's sort of I'm eyeballing you if you can't, uh, if you don't feel that. And uh, there's some other contributors who've raised their hand to create a, a small website, you know, static website to um, help promote the project a bit more. I mean, you know, today, if you want to learn about Envoy, um, you cruise on out to Envoy proxy slash you know, Nighthawk. And um, it's unfortunate actually, Otto and Jacob um, both weren't able to make it today, uh, both expressed regret. Um, but uh, the maintainers of Nighthawk have been um, uh, great to collaborate with and to bring in bring into this. Part of what that website will facilitate is really like documentation for the project. So today you can go to this page and and you get lots of details and uh, it's nice. If you want, if you're looking for you know docs, well. The only docs that you'll find are in the Envoy project. Um, 
go into the docs there. If you do a search for Nighthawk, I, th you'll f I think you'll find one, one mention, I believe. What a best practice. And uh, so my, my point is, um, outside of just trying to build the bits and get the bits into people's hands, it'll also really help facilitate um, documentation around the capabilities of the thing and, and uh, how it can be used. Good. Uh, uh, comments, questions. Uh, so Rodolfo, um, I just called you out a moment ago. This is probably the first time that you're really getting introduced to the project itself and to kind of what, what the purpose and why. And why. Clarifying questions. Um, I know there's a lot of, a lot of things you've yet, yet to be able to think about, but just the, does the, the logic behind, the, the justification, kind of the logic behind why, why we're spending time here, um, some of the things that we're looking to do in scope, do those make sense? Do we already have a GitHub repo for Get Nighthawk? Yeah, it's called, um, it, right now it's called Nighthawk Go, Nighthawk hyphen Go. Um, and that is part, uh, I, I, probably something I didn't explain um, as much. I don't know if this is, is as interesting, but so Nighthawk, like Envoy, written in C++. Um, well, the lingua franca of the rest of the cloud native world um, could be argued to be Golang. And so there's a little bit of a lack of like, part of what we're trying to achieve here is maybe bridging between the two. Um, and that's actually described in one of these line items. Yeah, um, here. And so it's a bit tentative, like maybe there needs to be a different repo, maybe there needs to be, uh, but right now the repo is Nighthawk Go. There's a link to it in here somewhere. Here. This had been used to um, help bridge between Golang in Meshery and the ability to interact with and orchestrate Nighthawk in C++. And, and so right now this, the, this when the domain is registered and when docs start to come forth, the project site and things, and maybe as we go to do workflows and things, I think right now the, the thought is that it would go in there. Um, yeah. I see, sorry. I see five people is working on, are working on uh, that project, but how many contributors uh, do you expect? Expect? It's it's a it's um, a smaller project in nature. Like, um, hey, no con no contributor is ever turned away. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, like in terms of the scope of what the project is trying to achieve, there's kind of there's some big big blocks, if you will. There's or the, or the bigger blocks are a project site, which mm, you could depending upon. How pretty you want to make it look? It, it's, you know, it's a it's a nominal to medium sized piece of work. There is probably the bulk load of the work comes into. Um, I'm going to go to the I'm going to go here to sort of say like, hey, there's a project site. Um, a, a bulk load of the work goes into the CI and the building the the packaging of Nighthawk into different containers into different package managers. Um, there is um, some co you know, coordination on like a, a bunch of things to kind of define like uh, what does it mean if you had nightly builds? Um, how are we doing facilitating sort of integrate? How are we uplifting that project and doing um, maybe some integration tests with it between Meshery and um, Nighthawk? Because the, potentially there could be breakage between those two components. Um, I don't know if that like, ca characterizes all of the um, all of the work to be done. Um, the five that you see there are, uh, I don't know that any of the, I, th I don't know that, I think there's only one of them that, that you see there that's actually um, committed. Um, that individual, his name is Pratye. Um, he, Pratye Banerjee, he is 
uh, an open source contributor and he's hot, hot to trot on the project site. So he's, he's kind of been putting effort into helping figure out um, what to do here. He's an open source contributor that's helped, he helped create the SMP spec site. He's a maintainer of that site. So he's coming to bear here as well. So Mert, like, um, yeah, we'll take, we'll take, you know, take anyone who's, who's interested. Um, but, uh, okay. oh, I, I asked a question because, because, uh, maybe we can make, uh, or arrange some hackathon, uh, to code together. Say that last part again. Hackathon arrange. workshop, maybe. Yeah, um, so it, it is the case that there are more people involved than are represented here. Um, the This particular meeting time doesn't work for all of the participants that want to to assist. Uh, Maybe some, there will be uh, mentors and, and uh, newcomers like layer five channel. Yeah. yeah. Um, Yep, we need to I, like this for this particular forum isn't the best. And this has been my struggle, Nikolai. I don't know if you've sort of watched me struggle over the last few months about like how deep to get into some of the service mesh working group um, projects here, because I feel like we're commandeering SIG networks time with it. But uh, each time that I've asked, I've been told like, hey, just continue to use this time up until there's some other yeah. topics and so. Okay, cool. Uh, but yeah, but so we need to do, you know, much more like uh, in the weeds things about some of what um, Nikolai was highlighting, actually, like, hey, you know, let, let's get more familiar with the build tool chain of Envoy itself. Um, the Nighthawk as a project, it doesn't have regular meetings to, to sort of lean into and attend. And so um, there are a couple of other projects, a few other people that I thought would be on today's call. Um, that are related to this. Uh, they are sub. They are also other work streams of the Service Mesh Working Group. Um, topics like MeshMark, uh, SMP. Um, but yeah. So so Mert, I don't have. This is like still. It's kind of a, a struggle for me because we, like, I've been. I've I helped create. Uh, and Nikolai might have been there as well, but like the cloud events, um, like as a project, more or less born of the CNCF. I mean, it was, and it was kind of built within, as a spec, sort of built within the serverless working group. So we have precedent for creating things, you know, sort of directly within the CNCF rather than externally and bringing them to. Um, but I think I, I, th I think we would do well to find probably a, a separate meeting from this to go through all the particulars of, uh, to, to advance SMP, to advance Nighthawk. Part of like advancing on Get Nighthawk, it will help advance the service mesh performance um, spec. Uh, the service mesh performance spec is intended to be up for review under Sandbox. And so, um, That'll be another meeting to help advance this in. So. Uh, sorry, I asked that question, uh, the workshop or hackathon, because uh, C++ is uh, building itself uh, daily. Uh, so like 11 and uh, 17, the standards. So I don't know which standard you follow. I didn't read the source code, the source code uh, and uh, I guess it will be fine to secure, uh, to fix the, the bugs uh, within the source code uh, with new C++ standards and the own uh, projects uh, code standards, coding standards. That's a great question. Um, if Otto or Jacob were here, the two, you know, a couple of the Nighthawk maintainers, they could speak to that more directly. Also, if Matt Klein were here, the one of the maintainers on Envoy, he could speak to that. I, I, I don't know. 
much of what we're trying to accomplish in Get Nighthawk is more packaging, um, docs, and distribution. Uh, much more of that than it is slinging a bunch of C++. So it's a bit, it's a bit you know, the focus is about around um, continuous integration, docs, so integration with the other tools. There is a desire to, to write some adaptive load, uh, an adaptive load controllers. Those would be in C++. Those would go into Nighthawk. Um, Otto, I can introduce, or um, Mert, I can introduce you to the folks who can answer that question. Okay. We, we, we have uh, taken down the notes, uh, take down notes, and they will read. Yeah, yep, they will, as a matter of fact. I was thinking um, I guess that, that this is going slightly off uh, uh, of the boundaries that you, you kind of draw here around to all the interest of get uh, get light hope here. But how how would this tool be useful in I don't know staging and even production environments? Is there, is there like I don't know set of use cases or I don't know example com configurations or I. I don't know this could be could be something interesting to this project, but um, I mean because okay, testing in a lab is great and good. You get you know the nice charts and etc. But then, um, you know, sometimes people are more more how to say facing challenges in the real world, which are kind yeah. of different than a lab. Yeah. Uh, Nikolai, I think I think it's a great question. Let me. Um, let me see if I can answer it with something of an example. I think um, very much so, very much so like integration into CI pipelines is something that it's in part why we're not, that project is not trying to write a new get Nighthawk CLI because, um, because there's already a significant investment in those use cases for Meshri CTL to do so the, the CLI here, actually CTL perf, uh, to, to run a performance test, you could then um, pass in your, well, I don't know, pass in your, here, let me just do it like this. Um, there's a CLI here for invoking either Nighthawk, WRK2, or Fork DO. And you can pass in a bunch of flags or pass in a file, that file would be in the service mesh performance spec, that, that SMP spec format. And uh, where you're saying, you're basically just saying, I wanna hit this endpoint for this long, at this many threads. Uh, so, you know, you're, just, you're giving it a profile for the test you wanna run. And then exactly to your point, Nikolai, that you would, um, Service, it's, it's very much so the intention and desire for um, Kuma or other service meshes or users to build that meshery CTL perf into their CI system, either as a regression test or as a or as a whatever test. But yeah, to basically receive re receive back the results with a yay or nay. Because to your point, like hey, the, the yay or nay. You don't necessarily need a human to look at a, a colored chart to determine what to do. You know, you, you might just want to know, hey, you know, the baseline for our project, either maybe our, the workload that we're the application we're creating, or for the mesh that we're creating. Um, it look it's been looking like this. It looks like this. We can describe that in a standard way using the service mesh performance. Um, we can um, have some repeatable tooling that we can just build into the CI system to run that. And then in accordance with the baseline that we have now, um, you know, different projects like Kuma can figure out if they're having regression issues or if they're advancing in performance. We spent a lot of time with the Istio um, performance and scalability team. As a matter of fact, that's where the early versions of service mesh performance, that spec SMP, that's where it came from. And so, yeah, it was written to be in part to be that. Um, 
So Nikolai, I'm gonna just I'm gonna read into that and just uh, and just assume that there's interest there <laughs> for for you guys. And anyway, um, yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, I, I know I'm joking, but um, yeah, honestly, it was it's built to do exactly um, what you're just describing. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So with that, and actually, Nikolai, just I think quickly to that point. Um, you know how we, we've discussed the SMI conformance uh, project a bit to to run some some conformance tests. The the same thing is true there as well that you would uh, be able to do uh, the same program at run meshery CTL SMI conformance tests using meshery CTL or using meshery's REST API. Either way, um, in in the CI process that you don't have to go run meshery. A user doesn't have to go run meshery. You can just programmatically invoke SMI conformance tests. And um, we're asking, we're yeah, soliciting that each project does that. The Nginx service mesh uh, folks are, have been pr pretty into it. Um, so is open service mesh. And so at some point, hopefully they'll have it running in their CI system. And when they do the, the conformance test results, will be sent to a central location and those results published. Um, and so, yeah, I, mean, I, I know, I know um, with your Kuma hat on that there are any number of other priorities, but just as an FYI, it uh, is intended to be run programmatically. Nice. Uh, any other any other topics today? Uh, I offer a small fix uh, for Debian. Uh, I see Debian twice. Uh, I sent the link. Uh, is it related to or and derivatives or Debian twice? Uh, it's probably just a redundant typo. Yeah, please. Yeah, it's probably. Yeah, go if you want to correct the doc. Yeah, you know, please do. Okay, I okay. Then I will delete the second uh, Debian, and then it will be Debian Ubuntu CentOS, CentOS, uh, and Mac macOS. Nice. Thanks. Yeah. All right, um, gents. Any anything further for today, or are we gonna get fifteen minutes back? Um, I was just checking just last uh, more for me. I was just checking uh, about the new TOC members. Who is the networking person there? I mean, is there any except for Matt, of course? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I guess I didn't. Re um... I think with Dave we were co-chairs for the service mesh track. So Dave from uh, uh, Net uh, Netflix. Or Spotify, I don't remember. Okay, there's all this. Yeah, it's a great question, Nicola. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize that. Um, uh, that there might be an impact. I didn't consider. So, so Matt is the liaison for the TOC to Sig Network. Do you know is his term coming due or? I'm I'm looking at the at the, like. Uh, GitHub CNCF slash TLC. Read me there. And yes, it's actually January 29th. Huh. Okay. Yeah, it's a good, I don't know. Oh. So, yeah, more that, that there's some elections going on or something. Okay. Yeah, 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 there are. Well, I got to tell you, I'm sick of. Um, Thinking about elections too here in the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ours actually are about to come. We have them two, two, two months, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> you you you'll get yours. It's coming. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man. Okay. okay. Yeah. Very nice to see you guys. Um, Thanks. See you in a couple of weeks. Have a great okay. uh, 2021 everyone oh thank you yeah yeah you too bye bye, bye.